whether it's a product for home or business, farm or factory, you can be sure if it's Westinghouse. Come on in. It's got to be short. It will be. I don't know. I wouldn't mind a recording of that. See anybody now? The look on Ryan's face when he comes out will do. Well, there. Sit down, Ryan. Mind if I close the door? Suit yourself. I don't like noise. How much of it is your doing? Most of it. The boys are getting a little jumpy. It ain't going to get any better. It's going to get worse. Is that a warning or a threat? Neither. It's facts. You're having a tough time tonight, McClary, but this is just a feeling. About 10 days from now, we're liable to mess up your Christmas Eve so you'll never forget it. I'm used to working holidays. <laughs> Who are you kidding? You know what's in back of all this. Big Charlie, he's getting restless. He wants to reach out of Shack Town and take over River City. You're liable to have a little war on your hands, and maybe not such a little one either. And? And it can all be over in a week. If. If what? If you want it that way. Now, you give me a break, I can get rid of Big Charlie for you for good. My terms are easy. I'm not in the market. I never make an offer twice. Run along, Ryan. Start your little war. We'll figure out a way to handle it. You're dumber than I thought you were, McClary. But don't blame me if you miss mass Christmas Eve. <laughs> get turned down, Pat? On what? Would you like to tell me, or would you rather have me guess? Guesses are cheap. They don't stand up in court. Well, can they come in cheap? The Globe's hungry. Well, they can have another field day tomorrow. With headlines telling how the police force is breaking down. Yeah, you look kind of tired, Walt. How much longer do you think you're going to be able to take this? Say, look, Pete, if you've got something to say to me, say it. All right. This is a growing town. 60,000 to 300,000 in 10 years. You haven't got enough men to do a decent policing job. Your budget's too small. You haven't got enough prowl cars, beat men, or jail cells. Don't waste time telling me something I know. I'm just mapping out a little diagram, that's all. You know, it wasn't so pretty even when you were able to keep big Charlie Donashek over in Shacktown. That was eight years ago. Since then, the boys have moved across the river. 
And it's been a long time since a woman has been safe on the streets after dark. What are you trying to do, Pete? Write an editorial and keep... You can't handle Big Charlie alone. What are you going to do now that Pat Ryan has clamped down on you? Why, well, those boys are buying up your men so fast you don't know who to send out on a job anymore. You're not riding this job, Walt. You're chasing. Tell us not enough. All right. I've shaken up the force twice. I've been down and yelled my head off to the mayor and the city council. They're sick of hearing my voice. Yes, the papers are screaming and the people are screaming. What good does it do? You tell me something I forgot. I'm just saying that you've got to get more help. I'm not saying where. Well, I'm not making any deals. I'll handle this my way or step down here. There's a good fire down at 4th and Dark Street. Go chase me. OK. I've got a kid out here, Chief. I thought maybe you'd like to see him. What's the charge? Shoplifting. He's been booked before. It's quite a list. How old? Eleven. Bring him in. You've even got time to talk to a kid when the roof is coming down. It hasn't come down yet. Okay, Samson. Take your hat off. Busy little guy. Grab him with both hands. He about cleared the five and dime. Okay, Paul, I'll take it. Sure. Close the doors, will you, Paul? Sit down, if you like. Well, stand, then, if it makes you more comfortable. <laughs> yeah. You've been stealing for quite a while, I see. More than a year. Sure, I steal. What of it? Why? How else am I going to eat? Where's your mother? Ain't got none. She died. Where's your father? What does he do? Slops up booze. Supposed to be a construction worker. Hasn't worked in two months, MB3. Hmm. So you figure that gives you the right to go out and steal anything you see, huh? Any time. Right. And the idea of jail doesn't scare you. What are you trying to do, scare me? No, you don't scare that easily. I'll say I don't. Huh. You know, it's after 8 o'clock and I haven't eaten yet. <laughs> I could do with some food. How about you? I ain't asking you for anything. No, it's the other way around. See, a man gets tired eating by himself. Anyway, I do. Table talk helps the digestion. That's what the doctors say. Why didn't you say that in the first place? I could do with a steak. That sound all right to you? Anything. Say, where does your old man do his drinking? Do you know him? Flamingo, mostly. It's Big Charlie's place. Hey, we ain't going there, are we? No. I was just wondering. Let's go. Okay. Yeah, hey, the board's getting jammed, Chief. We can't take care of the call. Do the best you can. I'm going to eat. down at headquarters playing footy with McClary tonight. When? Oh, around 8 o'clock. And? I only know the door was closed. Mr. Ryan's beginning to feel a pinch, huh? He's crying for help already. Yeah, but that kind of help might not be so healthy. <laughs> if he got what he was after, my guess is he didn't. McClary isn't the type. This shouldn't be too hard to check. And tell Ben to step in here. He's at the bar. Sure, boss. Clary's outside. He just came in. Yeah? Maybe I better have a talk with him. Well, if it's not the police force, have a drink. No, thanks, Charlie. Come in. All right. Just looking for someone, Charlie. Wouldn't be Pat Ryan, would it? You and him are getting to be pretty good friends, I hear. Well, it gets around fast, doesn't it? We got to operate. Yeah, sure. It's a big business. We do all right. Your fellas don't cause us enough trouble to complain about. They mind their own business. How much does it cost to keep them that way? <laughs> they come pretty cheap, and there's not too many of them. Uh, you sound just like Ryan, you know. You wouldn't be trying to make a deal with me, too, would you? With you, McClary, I got better sense. Well, then we should get along fine. We don't make the trouble. You know that, McClary. This rough stuff lately is Ryan's idea. But if he wants it that way, it's his funeral. Or yours. 
<laughs> Either way would be good news to you, huh? Yeah, I could get along fine without the two of you. <laughs> Only a punk like him could have thought he could make a deal with you. Say, look, you got a customer comes in here pretty regular. His name's Cooper. Works on a construction gang. <laughs> Yeah. What's that bum been doing now? Take him off my hands, McClary. I'll give you a piece of the place. Has he been around tonight? Sure. That's him at the table. Thanks. Cooper? Yeah? Mind if I sit down? Yeah, well, I don't like cops. But maybe you'll feel a little better with some coffee in you. Say, waiter, bring us a couple of cups of coffee here, will you? Black. Say, I'd like to talk to you for a minute about that kid of yours. Uh, What's the matter? Big Charlie and Pat Ryan yeah, kissed yeah. and made up. Been like this for two days now. Oh, by the way, McClary left word for me to drop around. Have you any idea what it's all about? Your guess is as good as mine. In fact, it's usually better. Huh? I'll let him know you're here. Oh, no, there's no need to hurry. I brought my homework. Hello, Chief. Pete Simmons is here. Ask him to wait. So how long do you think you can go without eating? Holly. Ah. One steak won't last two days, you know. Don't have to be steak. Oh, there are easier things to steal, is that it? What do you want me to do, start begging? <laughs> well, you're in a tough spot, kid. But your old man running out on you? Who says he's run out on me? He's been drunk this long plenty of times. Oh, uh, maybe. Only this time he's not drunk. I know, I talked to him. You talked to the old man? Yeah. About less than an hour ago at Union Station, he was catching a train for Des Moines. There's a big construction job going down out there. And he ditched me? No. He said as soon as he got paid, he'd send for you. He said he'd send for me? That's right. No kidding. Gee, he could make plenty if he'd only stay off the booze. So could you if you didn't think it was smarter to steal. I don't want no charity, not from anyone. Who said anything about charity? But there's a widow lady here in town who's not too strong and needs help. She keeps asking me to find her somebody to chop wood, dump the coals, take over some of the chores for her. She's got a spare room. She'd be glad to have somebody use. How do you know I wouldn't steal from her? I don't. But you'd get me in a lot of trouble if you did. Hey, look, I'm pretty busy. Will you go on outside and think it over? When you make up your mind, let me know. Why didn't you say I was getting in your way? I haven't got time to argue. Send Pete Simmons in. Well, I'll take the job if you still want me to. Good. Wait in the hall, Hal. I'll, I'll take you over to meet him. Her name's Mad Sorensen. Okay, I'll wait. Hello, Pete. You're a fool for punishment, aren't you all? Say, Pete. Huh? I need you to do a job for me. Uh, nothing crooked, I hope. Yeah, a little crimp. I want you to get me a two-stick clip from a Des Moines paper. Oh. Well, that shouldn't be any too hard. Uh, which paper? Doesn't matter. What matters is what it says. It's to report the death of a construction worker named Stanley Cooper while making an heroic attempt to save the life of another worker. How did Stanley Cooper really die? The drunken bum fell under the wheels of a boxcar last night. After parking the ticket, I gave him for a quarter rat gut. I get it. How soon do you want this forgery delivered? About a week from now. Okay. You'll have it. The forks go on the left, Hal. What difference does it make? Not much. It's just the way it's done, that's all. But it's just us. Well, we're important, aren't we? I suppose so. Oh, dear. I was hoping it would snow. I always like a white Christmas. Snow's all right before it gets dirty. Now, who could that be coming just at supper time? Oh, I'll get it. Oh, hello. 
Al? Oh, you yeah, have. Oh, Walter, how nice of you to drop by. Thanks. Come on in the kitchen. Thanks, Matt. Good to see you. How's the boy doing? Oh. Keeping you pretty busy around that stove? Oh, he doesn't eat half enough. I try to stuff him, but it's no use. Oh, I eat enough. I eat plenty. Oh, yeah. You'll do better. Hey, Walt, you look tired. Aren't you feeling well? No, I'm not tired, man. Just getting old, I guess. Well, how about staying and having supper with us? Well, I might at that. Things are pretty quiet downtown. Good. We'll have another place set in two shades. Okay, I'll do it. Well, I, I guess I'd better fix my hair if we're going to have company. I won't be a moment. Everything okay, Ham? Sure, everything's fine. Say, so I got some news for you. It's not what I like bringing you on Christmas Eve. It's, it's not very good news, Al. Pop? Yeah. He was killed two days ago. How? Was he soused? No, Al, here. You read it for yourself. That's from a Des Moines paper. <laughs> it's what I always thought. The old man was okay. Well, I'm sure he was, Hal. He was doing fine, staying sober. He would have sent for you in another month. I'd like to think he would. Well, sure he would. So, you know, on that kind of a job, there's always some kind of accident insurance. I'd be glad to send for it for you. I don't want it. Well, I he, don't want it. He'd have wanted you to have it, I know. How? Oh. I talked to him. Get that for me, will you, Hal? I'm sure. Oh, Captain McClary? Thanks, Captain. Yes, McClary. What is it for? The what? I'll be right down. What was that? Oh, it's some kind of trouble downtown. Oh. I've got to get right back. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, so am I. Oh, here. No, that's... That's for you, Hal. Good night. Good night, Paul. His car's out of the service. They took roofing nails over every intersection along the, the river. Tell them to walk it there. Take their ride, guns yeah. along. Things are up around that warehouse. Yeah, Two more bombings, Lieutenant. Grove and 12th and West Street near 16th. That'll be Foots McGarrity's and the Pelican. We've got no one to send now. They'll have to wait. Right. Did you get those last two, Ben? Yeah, got them. Look at this map. It's so full of red circles. Looks like chicken pox. Hey, this is murder. Hello. Oh, hello. Three hello. ambulances hello. have cracked up in the last ten minutes. Two of the drivers are dead. How? Crude oil. It's an inch deep on every downgrade from Mulberry Street to the turn. Bike. Anybody gets in a shack town tonight, he ain't coming out. When did it start? About a half hour ago. Four squad cars out of service already. Three ambulances cracked up. Every man we've got is out now. And the boys still jammed. Oh, and the hospitals are going crazy. Two of them are refusing to take any more calls from shack town. Ryan's red wheel going yet? That went early. Their dice tables and roulette wheels splattered all over Center Street. Yes, but the flamingo hasn't been touched. Ryan can't get through. Crude oil and carpet nails. Looks like Big Charlie's really opened up on the little mix. Yes, well, that's not the way it looks to me. What? My guess is this is Ryan's show, not Charlie's. Yeah. Look at this. There's not one place to touch for five blocks around the flamingo. Ryan has sucked the shack town boys as far off base as possible. If he can't get a car in, they can't get one back either. Big Charlie's a sitting duck for Pat right now. I think I'll take a run down the flamingo. But well, we haven't got a city car left here. Why don't I use my own? Hang on, fool. Do the best you can until I get back. Take someone with you. You're under arrest. I'm under arrest for what? Murder. I call it self-defense. Take a look at that drawer. He had a gun in there. He had a right to go for it if he had to. 
He could have pleaded self-defense. You can. Uh, you're in no shape to make an arrest. No. I ran into some of that crude oil of yours about five blocks back. I lost my gun along with the car. I don't think I'll need it. Too many of the boys know where I am. Catch. <laughs> well, you got the artillery, you got the evidence. You might even make me sign a confession. Everything you want on a platter. But one thing. What's that? A clean city. Clean? <laughs> yeah, that's right. You got me, McCleary. But you take me out of circulation, and you're really going to have trouble. The boys are going to move in and take over this town, and you can't stop them. And it won't end this week or next week, either. It'll go on and on. <laughs> but with Big Charlie out of the way, I can put a stop to this in 10 days. I can do what you can't do because I've got the money and I've got the manpower. After that, you'll have quiet, real quiet. At what price? My terms are very easy, McClary. I'll settle for three places with protection. And there'll be square places, too. No clip joints. We'll start with the red wheel. How long will that last? For life. As long as you keep your part of the obligation. Three places, that's all. That's all. I want a signed confession first. You'll get it, if I have your word, too. Start writing. Is that your word? It is. Okay. <laughs> you know, this is real funny. I'm signing away my life with Big Charlie's pen. Write it the way I say it. Ah, what difference does it make? A confession's a confession. I just want to be sure. Now, go ahead. I, Patrick Ryan. <laughs> I, Patrick seen part one of Burden of Guilt. Let's turn to our Westinghouse program. Whee! Gosh, what's he so happy about? Oh, boy! Well, I think anybody would be mighty happy if he got a brand new Westinghouse television set like this one with a 21-inch screen. These new Westinghouse sets are the finest, most up-to-date sets on the market today. They have more amazing new advantages than, than I've got fingers on both hands. For instance, you probably like to watch television with the lights on, but that means that you're apt to get a disturbing glare on your screen if you don't have a new Westinghouse set, because these new 1952 Westinghouse sets have a completely glare-proof tube. Now you can watch television with the lights on, with no glare and no reflections. And here's another wonderful new Westinghouse feature, and that's a special rubber gasket that goes all the way around there and keeps the dust out permanently. The dust can't get behind the screen and cloud up your picture tube the way it can with so many sets, and you never need to have it clean. And remember that every new Westinghouse set is equipped with the amazing new electronic clarifier. Except in the most remote fringe areas, this remarkable new development completely does away with every kind of interference. For instance, when an airplane flies over your head, your picture may start to flutter like this. Now that's very annoying, isn't it? But with a new Westinghouse set, you can say goodbye to flutter because of the electronic clarifier. And here's something that's enough to give anybody a headache streaks across your picture. They're caused by someone in the neighborhood using electrical equipment, such as a vacuum cleaner or an electric razor. Well, with the new Westinghouse set, the electronic clarifier does away with that kind of interference, too. And doesn't it almost drive you crazy when your picture starts to flip-flop like this? Well, that's another kind of interference that the electronic clarifier does away with. Now, you can get clear pictures that stay clear. Only Westinghouse, with the wonderful electronic clarifier, gives you no streaks, no flutter, and no flop over, except in the very farthest fringe areas. You've never seen a television set that would give you such real trouble-free performance. And these wonderful new Westinghouse sets have many other remarkable features, too. Go to your Westinghouse dealer and have him tell you the whole amazing story. And remember, you can be sure if it's Westinghouse.
let's return to Westinghouse Studio One. And burden of guilt. What's that? Yes, ma'am. Certainly, ma'am. You sent someone right over. What's the address? What does she want? Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Some dame over on Peach Street claims there's a peeping Tom on her fire escape. Why didn't she ask him in? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone want a pair of seats to the ball game today? Sure, I'll take them. And why don't you use them, Paul? I like the track better. Is it still going on? Well, they're just getting warmed up. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't have bothered to hurry. Hey, who is that crowd with the chief, anyway? Some sort of citizens committee. They're presenting him with a medal. 20 years of clean, courageous service or something. That is why, on this 20th anniversary of your appointment, Chief of Police, the citizens of River City wish to offer you their gratitude for having given us a clean, decent city. But above all, we haven't forgotten Bloody Monday. That Christmas Eve, 18 years ago, when the power of our police force was challenged in open warfare. But that challenge was met. And so for the 18 years of decent living and clean government that we have enjoyed, we, the Citizens Committee of River City, wish to present this token of our gratitude to our friend and Chief of Police, Walter McLaren. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know much else to say, but thank you. We've always tried to make this city a place that people would be proud to live in. We, I'm not sure that we've always done the right thing. We've just done what we thought had to be done. I'm glad you thought it was enough. Thank you. I'll just keep this right here as a reminder. That's very nice. Thank you. Walter, it was a real pleasure to, nice come, to, here to come here, too. Thank you. Thank We're you very, very proud of you. you. Thank you. Good night, Chief. Goodbye. Nice to see you. Now, you just got in under the gun, Pete. Have a bad night? Every night's bad for me. But that's not why I was late. No. You know, Pete, there's only one trouble with a thing like this. You feel as though you were listening to your own obituary. Sort of spoils the fun. You haven't asked me why I was late. Mm. Should I? I think so. I've been having a talk with the DA. Mm. Well, is that news, Pete? There was a time when you and he were pretty close. Yes, but that was quite a while ago. The kid's getting restless, Walt. He wants to start on Pat Ryan. He wants to close down the red wheel. I know that. Al Cooper is sitting over there in that DA's chair, just itching for a fight. He's your boy, Walt, or he was. Mm -hmm. He's a nice kid. But maybe it's time he learns something about the facts of life. I don't know what you're talking about, Pete. Well, for your information, I knew Mad Sorensen pretty well, too. I know how come she adopted Hal Cooper. She didn't have a dime two months before. She even put her house on the market. I know because I put the ad in the Globe for her. And I also know Stanley Cooper did not collect any insurance for getting drunk and falling under a freight car. That's something we weren't going to talk about, Pete, remember? Yes, I remember. But how long is it going to take you to get this through your fat Irish head, Walt? Cooper is gunning for you. Why, only this morning he came right out and asked me how safe I thought it was to close the red wheel with you still at police. What did you say? What could I say? Yeah, sure. You've got a reputation to protect, just oh, like the rest of us. Don't be a stubborn mick, Walt. Go over and talk to the kid. And don't turn your back. You're likely to find a firecracker going off under you. Say, Pete, close the door on your way out, will you? Oh, thank you. Mary? How are you, darling? What, dinner tonight? I don't see why not. I don't have anything on my pad after six. What had made her ask her at this hour? Oh, the senator blew in. Well, I can stand it if you can. 
How are things? How are the kids? Uh, he gave her a black eye. <laughs> well, you tell him that I'll be home at 6.30 and I'll blacken both of his eyes. All right. Uh-oh, the Iron Man just walked in. They look grim. They always do. Bye, Don. Well, what is it this time? Murder, arson, or rape? One step worse. Politics. They're putting on the heat. Who is? We just got word the senator's in town. Yes, I know. We're having dinner together. You know what he's going to talk about? No. Do you? Yes, I know. Ryan. He's going to ask you to lay off. Where'd you get this? Pendleton. And he's got a pretty good batting average on stuff like this. Well, that should make interesting conversation over dinner. You might have to break your date with the senator, pal. Did you hear about Ryerson? Ryerson? The old cop down at headquarters? That's right. He was retired last month. He went up to Chicago to see his daughter and had a stroke. He's in the hospital. Oh, I didn't know about that. He and McClary were pretty good friends. The chief took a train to Chicago this morning. He'll be gone till tomorrow night. You said you were waiting for him to turn his back. Well, he's turned it. I don't like doing it this way. I don't like it at all. What choice have you got? You know how things are, Hal. You order McClary to do it, by the time we get there, the place will be empty. It's happened three times already. I know all that, but I still wish there was some other way of doing it. Why not leave it to us? No. You go talk to the senator. We'll talk, drop in on Ryan. No, if it's going to be done, I'll do it myself. Is it going to be done? What time do things really get started at the Red Wheel? Saturday's a big night. By 10.30, there's usually a big crowd. We'll make it 11, then. Well, your messages are right on his desk. Well, he should be in any minute now. His train was due in 20 minutes ago. How many times does that make for Pat? Six times. He must be hot. <laughs> Good evening, Chief. Good evening. Pat, Ryan's trying to get in touch with you, Chief. The messages are on your desk. Thank you. Sorry to disturb you, people. Oh, I, I, I was just catching up. It was a rough night. Yes, I heard about it. After it happened. If it heard before, it wouldn't have happened. Most of those are from Ryan. I know. It's a nice job they did, too. Could be used a max on the door. We got in so fast, the money was still on the table. Davis told me on the phone. Yeah. And to cap it all, he claps Ryan in the clink. And Ryan is... Screaming his head off. You can't blame him either. What Cooper did to the red wheel last night was very rough indeed. So get me the district attorney. Will you call me when he's on the line? Look, after last night, what's going to happen to your deal? What deal? Ah, uh, now look, Walt. I've been working this beat for 30 years. You don't have to pat my behind for gas bubbles. Ryan isn't the only one that's going to holler. The senator is in town, too. Yes. Pat Ryan's out here, Chief. Wants to talk to you. Send him in. Obviously, you want to be alone for a little while. Keep trying, the DA. <laughs> Great girl, Justice. I wonder if she knows how hard some men have to hustle to do her work. No, I guess not. Oh, oh Pete. Am I putting you out? Oh, no. Walt took care of that for you. Seems to be getting a habit of his now, doing things for you. You think you're wise, Walt, letting him hang around here as much as he does? He's just guessing. He's been doing that for years. Sit down, Pat. Thanks. It's been a long time. I uh, think we'd better have a little talk, McClary. I suppose you know what Cooper and his boys did to the Red Wheel last night. May I ask why? It wasn't my idea, Pat. I was in Chicago. Well, what about our agreement? I've lived up to my end of it, to the letter. Yes, I know that. 
Listen, he can't knock off the red wheel, you know. That's a permanent installation, not the kind we throw away in raids. I want my equipment back. I'll talk to him. I'm waiting for his call now. Do that. Our agreement still stands, you know. But in case you're getting any ideas, bear this in mind. Nothing has changed. That little strong box you have over there in the safe is loaded with dynamite, and we're both sitting on top of it. If it blows up, we both go with it. If I were you, I'd remember that. Yes. Oh, Hal. Uh, Walt, I'd like to talk to you for a minute, if I can. Yes, I can be over there in a few minutes. See you. Hey, wait here, Pat. I'll be back as soon as I've seen you. Thanks. Yes. Yes, all right. We can go over the rest of the stuff tomorrow. We better break it up now. The chief's on his way over. You want us to wait, Hal? No, this is liable to take some time. Grab yourself a nice sleep. We'll do the rest of it in the morning. Okay. okay. Yes? Captain McClary is here, Mr. I'll Cooper. show him in. Thanks, Bill. Stu. Take it 8.30. 8.30. Good evening, Chief. Good evening, Bill. Hello. Stu. Hello, Walt. How are you? You're looking fine. Thank you. How's your mother? Madge? Well, she's getting a little older, but she says she feels all right. Well, uh, sit down. Thanks. Thanks. That mug of yours. You always look the same whether you were going to raw hide me or pat me on the back. It was a tough proposition for a kid. It's no better for a man. A kid knew what he had coming. And he got it, good or bad. Walt, I went around you last night. Pretty rough way to treat you, wasn't it? It was. If there had been any other way to do it, I would have used it, believe that. Out there is a record that speaks for itself. Nobody knows better than I do what it costs a man named Walt McClary who gave it to us. You took a dirty boom town, hip deep in graft and corruption. You gave us a place to live. But you couldn't do it barehanded alone, Walt. Nobody could do that. You had to have a tool of some kind, a lever. And you used it well. But there's one thing about a lever, Walt. It tries both ways. I won't argue that. So I went behind your back. That's one way to get your picture in the papers? A lot of people are saying that. They're calling me an empty-headed idealist. They say that trying to stop gambling is as foolish as trying to stop a man from eating. Do you go along with any of those opinions? You'll do me no credit asking that. You've known me long enough to know the answer. Yes, well. Yes, I know. But I also know something else. You and Pat Ryan had a nice little balance worked out here. But the balance is shot now, Walt. Ryan's been spreading out. If that were true, I'd know it. Not in the city, Walt, in the state. It's a different proposition. Pat Ryan's no Charlie Dunachek. He's a businessman. And he's learned that you don't need guns or violence to milk a town dry or a state. Pat Ryan's in politics up to his ears, and he's going fast. Politics is something else. That's his business. So you don't think that's dangerous? First things first. So my job is to keep this town clear of rackets. Yeah, sure, Pat's in politics. You say that's dangerous. You might be right. I wouldn't know because I'm used to dealing with facts, not theories. And one good, hard fact comes to mind now. You get rid of Ryan if you can. And you leave this town wide open. Someone else will take his place. That someone might be a Capone or a Big Charlie. What then? This isn't a boom town any longer, Walt. It's a solid and respectable community, except for Pat Ryan. That's why I'm getting rid of him. You make it sound easy. But you're licked before you start. Believe me, Hal, I know. Maybe. But I'm going ahead with it just the same. I hoped I could work with your blessing. If not, then I'm going ahead with it till it's finished. Or I'm finished. Oh, Walt, I wish there was some way I could... Walt, don't you think I know what I owe you? What? Anything I ever did from the time I was a kid, I'd say to myself, how will this look to the chief? If you said it was right, it was right. If you said it was wrong, it was wrong. I'm still asking. You were a kid then, huh? You're not any longer. 
You stand on your own two feet now. Nobody can do your thinking for you. Not me, not anybody. He wouldn't have listened. Well, what's pushing him? Does he want his face on page one? Well, don't tell me you're climbing on that bandwagon, too. I'm still looking at the facts. I'm looking them right in the face. Well, that was shorter than I expected. You did see Cooper, didn't you? I saw him. Fine. When do I get my equipment back? You don't. You mean your boy won't listen to you? He's not my boy any longer. He's his own man now. So that's how it is, huh? Now, Clary, I've been pretty nice about this right up to now. I gave you a chance to square it. I don't like to play rough, but if that's how it's going to be... trying to do, scare me? No. You don't scare that easy. I'll say I don't. Could you use a cup of coffee, Chief? Yes, Paul, I think I could. Jake, I've got some right out here. Thank you. Westinghouse program again. Do you see what I see? Well, I don't see anything but a clean dish towel. That's just the point. That dish towel is one of 18 that was washed in a Westinghouse laundromat along with 500 little black seeds. But where are those little seeds now? Why, they're gone, of course. This rinse test is so amazing and so very convincing that I want you to go to your Westinghouse dealer and try the test for yourself. Your dealer will give you a little package like this containing 500 little black seeds. Then he'll give you 18 dish towels. Now, you take those dish towels and just slip them into the laundromat. Then, take those 500 little black seeds and throw them in on top of the dish towels. Start the laundromat, wash the towels, and when the wash is all done, just try and find those seeds. But wait, you just try that test with any other washer, and you'll be amazed at how many seeds are still left in the towels. Those seeds represent the dirt, lint, and soap curds that are present in any load of wash. And the way the laundromat gets rid of those seeds is just the way it gets rid of dirt. Now, other washers don't get rid of dirt the same way because they don't have the laundromat's exclusive wash-away, rinse-away action. You see, most other washers have a straight up-and-down tub, like this. And when the dirty wash water drains out, it drains down through the clothes, leaving all the dirt and soap curds in the clothes. But with the Westinghouse laundromat, when the wa water drains away, the exclusive inclined action tilts the basket back like that. Now, the clothes are tossed to the top of the basket, and the dirty water drains away from your clothes and not through them. That's how the laundromat gets dirt out and keeps dirt out. That's the famous wash-away, rinse-away action that you'll find only in the Westinghouse laundromat. And don't forget this other wonderful Westinghouse exclusive, too, the way to save door. It weighs each load of clothes and registers the weight right there. Together with the water saver dial, it saves you soap, hot water, and money. And be sure not to forget that seed test that I told you about. Tell your dealer that Betty Furness sent you in. I'm sure that you'll really enjoy watching the world's finest automatic washer in action. And remember, you can be sure if it's Westinghouse.
return now to Westinghouse Studio One and Burden of Guilt. Well, I'm sorry, Senator, but Mr. Cooper went out early this morning and he hasn't come back yet. Yes, he has all your messages on his desk. Ooh. Jennifer? I'm still out. Oh, I wanted to tell you, Mr. Cooper, you're... Moms, bless your heart, what are you doing Hello, here? Hello, Hal. <laughs> It's about time I visited your office, don't you think? I certainly do. Don't tell me you're worried about me, too. Why, is somebody worried? Oh, half the town, including Walt. He thinks I'm putting my neck in a sling. I had a caller this morning. Who? Pete Simmons from the Globe. I haven't seen him in two or three years. He seems to think that things are pretty serious for Walt. Is that right? Perhaps. He believes that Walt asked you to go easy, and you refused. Well, that's not quite the way it happened. Oh, hell. Even if it's close, you mustn't brush it off. There's so many things you don't know. I know, Mums, I know, but this is something I believe in. I don't know how far I can draw back now. Couldn't you... Couldn't you drop that case against Pat Ryan? Why? Getting rid of Ryan should be a favor to Walt. It would, would get Ryan off his neck. Not according to what Pete Simmons told me. Look, Moms, I'm not going to do anything to hurt Walt, believe that. But I can't pull off the dogs now. I'd be breaking too many promises to too many people. None of whom took you in when you were a kid, believed in you, put you on your feet. Don't ever forget that, Hal. I'll try ever. not to, Moms. I'll try not to, but the thing that Walt taught me was to hang on to what I believed in, come hell or high water. I don't want to forget that either. Well, I, I suppose you'll have to do what you think is right. The only thing is, Hal, I want you to be sure you know what you're doing. I hope I do. Yes? Mr. Ryan is here to see you, Mr. Ryan. Cooper. Say I'll see him in a minute. Well, I was just going. It was, it was nice having this talk with you, Hal. Give my love to Mary and the children, won't you? And, Tell them I'll drop in to see them tomorrow. I'll do that. They'd love to see you. Goodbye, dear. Mr. Ryan, come in. I uh, should be a lot angrier with you than I am, young fellow. You and your boys cost me quite a lot of money a couple nights ago. I guess we did. On the other hand, those things can usually be dealt around if two people who know what they want don't lose their heads. We have one thing in common, Cooper. We're both ambitious. Well, the newspapers tell me I am. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Young fellow your age who isn't restless isn't worth very much. You're on your way up, that's not hard to tell. Of course, it could take quite a long while going the regular route. And there are a lot of risks along the way. There are advantages to getting there quicker. Getting where? Mm. Governor, senator. Neither one should be hard to handle. At what price? Oh, my, my terms are always easy. That's why I get more business than others. The grand jury meets Wednesday, Mr. Ryan. Will the office still hold Friday morning? Mm, no. No, it wouldn't. You see, after 24 hours in front of that jury, you'll have trouble keeping your membership in the Bar Association. <laughs> You'd be no further use to them. You see, I don't back lame horses. Then I'm afraid it's no deal, Mr. Ryan, because I'm going to meet that grand jury on Wednesday, and so are you. That's a refusal, then, huh? Yes. Look, I haven't played rough in a long time. Maybe I've forgotten how. I'll see you Wednesday. You have a family, haven't you? That's right. Too bad. <laughs> Okay, Louie, I'll get word to the chief right away. What was that? That was guards. They called me in from Brookside and Cleaver Road. They found two intersections covered with broken glass and cop attacks. That's Ryan. I'll tell the chief. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, Joe. What? You yeah, was she mugged? You yeah, where? Better come out and listen to these calls, chief. Ryan's gone to work again. Don't make you think so. There have been five muggings in the last hour. Then Scotty just called in. He's found broken glass and cop attacks out in Brookside. Brookside? That's the residential district. Yeah. What's the one out there? That's why I thought you ought to listen in. What is it? What? Where? Is she dead? 
Have you got an ambulance yet? Right. I'll tell him. What's that? Collier just phoned in. There's been a bad crack up at a hillside in Northrop. He says he's, he's checking. He doesn't recognize the car. He thinks it may belong to the DA. How many in the car? Just one, a woman. He doesn't recognize her. He says there wasn't much left to her face. That's trying. That... Listen, take over, will you, Paul? Right. Get everyone you can out in the streets. Right. I'm going over to the hospital. Try and get in touch with the Hal Cooper. He may be at the office. Break it as easily as you can. Hello? DA's office? Is Mr. Cooper there? Lieutenant Davis, police headquarters. What time is it now, Walt? It's 9.30. Where is Hal? He's had a half hour to get here. Yes, if he didn't run into some of that crude oil. How is she, miss? She's out of the operating room. The doctor will be right down. Thank you. Oh, Hal, we've been so worried about you. Where's Mary? They're bringing her down right away. How is she, Mom? We don't know. The doctor will be here in a minute. Well, do we have to wait down here? Can't we go up and see? No, I won't do any good, Hal. You'll be here before you can find him. The kids. Is Bertha with them? Yes. I suppose he's kicking himself around the block. He didn't get them, too. Mr. Cooper? Yes, how is she, Doctor? Well, she's very weak, but she has a chance of pulling through, of course. How long? It's hard to say. It won't be quick. The elevator's coming down. I'd like to go meet her. Oh, Tell him to call it off. Have Walt go down now and tell him you're calling it off. Did he tell you to ask me that? Of course he didn't. But he was thinking it. I was thinking something quite different. If you're going to call that friend of yours, I have a message for him. Tell him I'll see him Wednesday. He couldn't have done better to make sure I'll be there. That's a call I'd be glad to make. Big ace, Fitz. Two bits. I'll stay for one. Okay. Walt's been gone three hours now. I think I'll call the hospital. Get a report on her condition. Right. I'm just calling the hospital. How's she doing? She's still alive. How are things around here? Pretty quiet in the last hour. Yes. The job had been done. Say, Pete. Huh? When you finish that game, come in my office. I'd like to talk to you, man. Oh, I can throw in now. It's only chicken feed. No, play it out. All I've right. got a phone call. I've got to make sure. come from the hospital. Yes, it's not one of your best jobs. She's still alive. I thought I'd call you and let you know that the boy is going ahead. Alone? No, not quite. I'm working with him from now on. Or maybe it's not. I don't know anymore what's wise and what isn't, but they seem like pretty good reasons to me. Oh, yes, yes, one more thing. Scartsy got a pretty good picture of the girl lying in the road. I'll send it to you tomorrow. You can put it on your mantle. Come in, Pete. Thanks for letting me play out that last hand, Walt. I made three bucks. Never mind the light, Pete. It's as much as two old men like you and me can stand. Yeah. You look pretty well beaten. Not yet. Of course, that, that may be only a question of time. Pete, I'm teaming up with Cooper. What? Yes. Me. It may not be much, but it makes Hal's chances a little better. A little, yes. Very little. You know, 18 years ago, Ryan was hard to buck. Big Charlie Donacek found that out. And whatever happened to Big Charlie Donacek, anyhow? Ryan's a lot tougher today. 
He's got too many big men in the state on his side. How many? More than you. He's got the entire state senate in his pocket. To say nothing of political leaders and chiefs of police. Yes, beginning with River City. Uh, the kid can't win with what he's got, Walt. Neither can you. What happened to his wife ought to give him an idea. He doesn't scare very easily. That's not enough. It may be his hide next. Yes, I know it's not enough. Both of us do. We've been around much longer than he has. He needs help. Then you'd better send for the Marines. A minute ago, you asked me whatever became of Big Charlie Donacek. Oh. Well, it just so happens I can answer that. I was in the Flamingo the night he died. I've even got the gun he was killed with. I've also got a document signed by a man named Pat Ryan. A what? A confession. Yes. That's the lever I've used to keep River City clean. Yes, of course, you know, it hasn't bothered Pat much. He always knew it could pry both ways. But maybe you'd like to look at this, Pete, before I turn it over to the district attorney. Should make a pretty good story for page one. Uh-huh. Well, what do I say? Contributed by a public-spirited citizen. Ah, oh, no, no, that's too thin, Walt. No. Contributed by Walter D. McClary. Ah, oh, no, you're not fool enough for that. Why not? I've always known this had to catch up with me. You don't make a deal with one of these fellas without expecting to get your belly kicked. I know, but this, this is bad, Walt, very. Suppression of evidence, dereliction of duty, those two for sure. Maybe accessory after the fact. Why? They can hit you with a book. That's for the courts to decide. Oh, well, maybe after the jury finds out all the facts, they won't be so rough. Don't count on that. There's only one thing you can be sure of. The prosecution will do its best. You can't scare that boy and you can't buy him. You can only be proud of him. wants to show you how to wake up singing. Well, she knows the secret of it. Instead of waking to the sound of a harsh alarm, she wakens to the sound of her favorite music brought to her by this beautiful new Westinghouse clock radio. You'll agree its tonal quality is simply perfect and it's an absolutely accurate clock. You just pull out this knob here and set it just the way you would any alarm clock. And then instead of a harsh alarm, the first sounds you hear in the morning will be lovely music. And this wonderful Westinghouse clock radio will sing you to sleep too. Just set this sleep control right here and it shuts off automatically when you fall asleep. And look at this too. Now, you can use this connection right back here to start your morning coffee perking or to turn your Westinghouse electric sheet or blanket or even your reading lamp off or on. Now this handsome Westinghouse clock radio comes in this maroon cabinet that you see here and it also comes in an ivory cabinet. And what's more, it costs only $36.95. Every morning, every evening too, you'll be using this wonderful Westinghouse clock radio. You can be sure if it's Westinghouse. <laughs> 